Hello, this is a brief introduction to the intuition behind the specific factors model. The specific factors model has, in general, two countries, two industries, and two factors of production. What is special about it is that one of the factors, usually capital, is fixed uh, to the industry, is specific to the industry, and one of the factors is mobile between industries, so that's usually labor. That's what I have uh, drawn here. So in industry A, we have a piece of uh, capital, which is that green thing, and we have five workers. And in industry B, we have another piece of capital, and we have seven workers. The question is, what will happen to output, as well as the real returns to capital and labor, if there is a policy change in this country? Uh, we tend to think of policies as being trade policies, so suppose there is a change in, uh, in trade policy, either trade becomes freer or it is restricted due to, say, an, in, uh, an import tariff or something like that. Either way, when the relative price changes, the country will change its production pattern. Suppose that this country, uh, after the change in trade policy, would like to produce more of good A. So they want to expand output in industry A. Since capital is fixed, the only way you can do it is by moving workers from industry B to industry A. So, you know, we would take a worker and we move him over right over there. Uh, of course, if you have more workers, we would expect there to be an impact on output. To be specific, we would think that output in industry A would go up. Uh, but now there are six workers sharing the, the, the piece of machines or the capital unit instead of five. So we, we would think that each individual worker would be slightly less productive because of uh, there being more of them. Of course, if you want to be technical, the reason is that we have diminishing returns. So when you add one more uh, variable factor to a fixed factor, output will increase at a decreasing rate. So the marginal price will go down. But the intuition is also uh, that now this piece of machine has six workers working it instead of just five. So this piece of machine, the marginal product of this one piece of machine will increase because, you know, maybe we can add another ship that goes all night. Or maybe, you know, you have another worker so they can, uh, you know, they can share what they do and they can become more efficient at what they're doing. So we would think that the marginal product of capital will increase. In a minute, I will be more specific about that. Of course, when we, you know, in Industry B, where we took the worker and we moved them, uh, with fewer resources in that industry, we would think that output will go down. But what about the marginal product of labor in the B industry? You used to have that each capital has to be shared among seven people, but now it only has to be shared by six. That means that each worker has slightly more capital at his or her disposal, and that's why the marginal product of labor will actually increase. Of course, the piece of machine, there are fewer workers uh, working it, and therefore the marginal product of capital will go down. And this is, uh, you know, this is all. So we, if we, oh, let's not move the capital. We can't. It's specific. We have to move a worker, and if I did that, the story will be the same. You know, we have more output. Each worker will be less productive, but the piece of uh, capital will become more productive. So this is what happens over and over as we move more and more workers over to the A industry from the B industry. But let's be more specific. I'm going. I I created some numbers and numerical at that. So here we are. Have. Uh, I'm using just a, a standard Cobb Douglas production function. So we have, you know, that output depends on capital and labor. And just uh, we have constant returns to scale, so the two exponents add up to 1. Both exponents are less than 1, which means that we have diminishing returns to each of the two factors. And I'm using the same thing for both uh, industries. I'm going to be focusing on industry A, though. Uh, to find the marginal product of labor, I just took the derivative of QA with respect to LA, and that's what we have right here. And to find the marginal product of capital, you just took the derivative of QA 
with respect to Ka. And that's what we have right there. So if I just look at these, I, I wrote down a few numbers first. Um, you know, if you have one piece of machine, four workers, if I just plug that into my production function right here, uh, we have output equal 2, plug all the numbers into our, our marginal productivity equations and the marginal product of labor is 0.25 and marginal product of capital is 1. If I add one more worker, output increases, marginal product of labor decreases and marginal product of capital increases, just like uh, we expected from the previous slide. Alright, so uh, I just want to keep doing this two more times here. So if I added the six worker, which is what we did in the previous uh, slide, uh, I said in that that uh, output is going to increase, and it did. It went from 224 to 245. I said the marginal product of labor will decrease because each worker will have less capital at his or her disposal. So it went from 0.22 to 0.20. It decreased. And I said the marginal product of capital is going to increase because each machine now have more workers working it. And the marginal product of capital increased from 112 to 1.22. And if I, sorry, if I uh, continue doing that, if I added another piece of work, another unit of labor, you can see once again that output increases, marginal product of labor decreases 0.20. 0.2 to 0.19, and the marginal product of capital increases 132 instead of 1.22. All right, so that's what's driving the changes in the real wages because it is a competitive economy, and therefore the real return to any factor is equal to that factor's marginal product. So as we add more and more workers, you can see that the marginal product of capital. Uh, increases, which is why we say that capital owners in the export industry benefits. We can see that marginal product of labor in this industry decreases, so they are paid less for the work they were doing in industry A. Uh, however, in order to really determine what happens to labor, we would have to look at the change in marginal product of labor in the B industry, which is actually going to be opposite, and which is why we would say that the impact on the mobile factor is ambiguous or uncertain. And the marginal product of capital in the B industry, so capital owners who owns capital that, are, that is specific to the import competing industry will see their marginal product go down or their real return go down. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much.